So I'm beholden to you all. Thank you for allowing me to sit here, dressed in these strange clothes, and talk to you. Yeah. Some of you know that I am ordinary, an ordinary person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dressed up today, that's all. <laughs> um, oh, Ram Maharaj and I have known each other for a long time. And um, there's always been a heart, herzlich, <coughs> Verbindung. Is that right? That's <laughs> There's always been a heart connection there. And um, we love each other like comrades, colleagues, friends. Yeah. And uh, he always bullies me a little bit. And, and I'm always showing reluctance. And then uh, he pushes me and then I do something. <laughs> and by his mercy, it turns out nicely. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, what would you like me to talk about, actually? Is there any particular subject that I could talk about? Anybody? Yes. Like to say what Prabhupada meant to say when he threatened Krishna to complain to Radharani if she don't help him to, if he don't help her to make her message successful. Yeah, well, Krishna's under Radha's thumb, as everybody knows. So if Radha tells Krishna to do something, he has to do it. You know. So, um, as in every household, Simhati Radha is. Uh, the boss, you know, she's queen. And um, so the problem obviously is one of her manjaris, you know. And so he's threatening Krishna. Only, only a manjari is threatening Krishna. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, you gotta, you got to help me here, you know. There's a mission of compassion to be carried out here, you know. So Srimati Radhika is the embodiment of compassion. So um, actually this Sankirtan movement is going on under her direction, you know. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepts the mood <coughs> and the colour of Srimati Radhika. And um, it's due to her compassion that this whole, that everyone is getting from this mercy. Yeah. So, yeah. Krishna actually is very happy to serve his devotee. He likes that, you know. Although we speak about Krishna as being the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's actually a person like us, like you, like me. Yeah. And he's made us as people, not because he wants to be God, because he wants to sit on a big throne and be offered lots of prayers. He actually finds that a bit boring, it's a bit dull, actually. Wouldn't you find that dull? You know, imagine you're sitting on a big throne and everyone's praying to you and fanning you and offering you incense, you know? After a while it's like, what time is it? <laughs> uh, thank you very much, everybody. Um, you know, I've, I'll, I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> So Krishna has many different aspects, and we know that one of those aspects is, is the Lord of Vaikuntha. So in that aspect, he offers, you know, he, he's offered praise and respect by all his devotees, and they, they love that, and he likes it too. We, but also, we have sorry, the, maybe change because it makes strange sounds. Yeah. Also, we have the aspect of Krishna, which is the mood he wishes to spread, particularly now. Is, you know, the mood of them. Um, oh, are you going, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Rosie, Rosie. The mood of friendship. Mm. <laughs> it's a mood of friendship, you know. Krishna wants to be our friend. Yeah. So he likes that more than being God. Yeah. And when you're somebody's friend, it means everything becomes less formal, isn't it? You can even insult your friend. And you can order your friend. You can hit your friend. When I meet my friend, sometimes, actually in England we have this kind of, when you meet someone you've known a long time ago, the first thing the two people do to make sure that the friendship is still on firm ground, they insult each other. <laughs> do you do that here in Germany? <laughs> that's that's the stuff. Because if you can insult each other happily, then that means you're still good friends, isn't it? Yeah? You're still very good friends. So generally speaking, you use the harshest word against your friend. You use stupid this or that. Yeah? And your friend also says, you go, and then you look at each other in the eye and you realize, oh, we're still friends. <laughs> so, Krishna actually likes, he's created all these relationships because he likes them. You know? And this Krishna consciousness is a personal movement. This is all about a personal relationship with God. You know, Not with God, but with Krishna. You know? And Krishna has so many different names, you know? And he makes all the living beings, I mean, all the living beings are aspects of him. When we say he, we make, he makes them, it's not like the creationist idea that, you know, he gets a bit of clay or something and makes a little figure and sticks it and then breathes some breath into it, you know? It's not like that. Actually, every living being is a manifestation of Krishna. We are expansion. Yeah. So every conscious being is expanded from Krishna's consciousness. That's including the jiva also. The Balaram, Lord Balaram is the source of all the jivas. So the jivas in the spiritual world, they come from Balaram. Those who are there in Gola, they come from Balaram. Those that are in Vaikuntha come from Sankarshan. And those jivas who come into this material world, they come from Lord Mahavishnu. So they're all expansions of his awareness. You know? In the um, in the Upanishads, it says the Lord says, and he desired sakamayata bahusyam. He wanted to become many. You know, he desired to become many. So you might wonder, well, what, what, on, what on earth are we doing here? We're here just so that God can punish us for being naughty children. You know? This is often a religious idea, so that we're, we're naughty children of God. He gets his kicks through punishing us and you know, making us feel guilty about ourselves, how bad we are. You know? But actually this is not a condition. You know, Krishna wants to enjoy with us. He wants to have fun with all the living entities and from a certain perspective even this material leela is also fun you know but it doesn't seem too much like fun from our perspective but what we're learning gradually is that we can relate both to each other and to God you know, this is all about relationships you know Especially this Krishna consciousness. Every religion has its rituals, its set of rituals. Every religion has its religious books. You know? Every religion has its places of worship and its altars. You know? And its congregations and its hymns and its songs. You know? But what Krishna consciousness has, which is very special, is an understanding of these five rasas. You know? which I don't think exists in any other religion. You know? These five rasas are ways in which we can relate to Krishna. You know? So, you know, one of them is Shanta Ras. Actually, my name is Santa Maharaj. Actually, my name is Bhakti Chana Shanta. You know? 
but somehow another Malati changed it into Santa. So um, the next one is friendship. Yeah. Sorry, that's your last. The next one is servitude, and then friendship. Mm. And then, but son, you you know, Krishna is your son. And then, Madhurya, you know, so, you know, Krishna is your lover. So. Wow. So Krishna actually wants to increase the intimacy of his relationship, you know, with us. You know. He doesn't want that we remain on a platform of awe and reverence. <coughs> he wants that we should try to become more intimately connected with him. But especially in this Kali Yuga, especially through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's all of these different rasas are being offered, you know? Please develop your friendship with me. Become my friend, you know? Why not? This is one of the one of the nine methods of devotional service, isn't it? Befriending the Lord, to make him your friend. Yeah. So even with Christianity they have concept of God as my friend, isn't that? They have that concept. They pray to God, you know. At night before you're going to bed. When I was in school, you know, we had a little prayer book and Everyone, before you go to bed, you kneel. You kneel by your bedside, you know? Did you do that when you were a child? And you say a prayer to God. As a friend, isn't that? Knowing that God somehow is there and knows everything about you in intimate detail. You know, he knows exactly what's been happening during your day. You know, exactly what you've said and what you've done. And he's not judging you. He's... He's your friend. And Krishna reiterates this in the Gita too, isn't it? Surhe Dham Bhutana. I'm your friend. I'm your, not only your friend, but I'm your most intimate, well-wishing friend. And even the Upanishads also state this very clearly. So there are two birds in one tree. One bird is trying to eat the fruit of the tree. And the other bird is just watching. But the other bird is a friend of the first bird. A friend, you know? So, this is some, just something to consider. I know many of you here, maybe, are already thinking about Krishna to be my friend. And it's interesting that Paramadvaiti Maharaj is bringing this verse up and was saying to me, he said, can you explain why A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami is ordering Krishna and saying, you know, if you don't, if you don't do, if you don't behave properly, I'm going to tell Radharani. <laughs> and Radharani will sort you out. Is, all right. is, is the translation okay? Yes. Yeah, is it not too fast or anything? No, okay. Yeah, Radharani will sort you out. Do you understand that? Sort you out? <laughs> How would you say that in German? Huh? I was tired of yeah? Yeah? That's right, yeah, yeah. So he's threatening Krishna, isn't he? You know? Hey, you better, you better shape up, you know? You better shape up here. I've got work to do and I need your help. And if you don't, if you don't perform, I'm going to tell Radharani. <laughs> and Radharani is going to tell you off. <laughs> so, you know, if you want... To get on with Radharani, then you know you you should um, you should help me. You know? and from this actually we can understand that Shri Prabhupada was definitely in a Manjari bath because only a Manjari can uh, can order Krishna, right? In that way. So sometimes Krishna comes coming looking for Radharani. She's inside a kunj. And the, the, the Manjari, the little girl, is standing at the gate and telling Krishna, you can't come in. I'm sorry. Radharani is not disposed to see you right now. <laughs> She's indisposed. <laughs> is, that, is that word all right? Indisposed? 
Yeah? How would you say that? Indisponiert. Sorry? Nicht Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, okay. If anyone has a question or a comment, by the way, you know, or if anyone thinks anything I'm saying is too outrageous, you can just, just tell me. I'm just talking, you know, that's all. So, only Manjari can actually um, order Krishna in that way. No other, only the servants of Srimati Radhika can tell Krishna what to do. So this song, in spite of arguments from other quarters, <laughs> to the contrary, proves that Asa Bhaktivedanta Swami was a Manjari, you know? Because he's ordering Krishna, you must tell me. Yeah. Has Brahmadvaiti just taken off? I thought I was just going to say a few words. No, I said. <laughs> <laughs> he looks very tired. He's tired, yeah? I don't know. He looks like. Oh, okay. Is, is Gurudev coming back? Um, mm -hmm. uh, he's playing with the children. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't tell us truth, actually. <laughs> so you can see. You can see that this is the. Great Guru, he's sitting every day talking to so many people. Sometimes he's thinking, oh, actually, I want to go and play with the children. <laughs> <laughs> so Krishna also, like, he's like that. You know, he's sitting on a big throne and everyone's offering worship and prayers and saying, you are the creator of the entire material manifestation. The three modes of nature are coming from you and are controlled by you and, you know, this, yes, that's true, that's true. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but actually, I, you know, actually I feel like having a break. I want to go and play with the children. <laughs> So Krishna actually likes it when his devotee overpowers him with a special mood of intimacy. And uh, in, during the Dhammadhar month, we celebrate that. You know, we celebrate that special mood of intimacy, that the, the prayers that we sing, you know, the Dhammadhar prayers, they, um, they glorify this mood of um, Krishna's submission to his devotee. <coughs> so this mood of submission of Krishna to his devotee is only found in Vraja. It's not found anywhere else. Yeah. There's a special connection actually between Vraja and this earth. You know, the Vraja Leelas are called Balmik, you know, that means, or Naravat. That means they're like human pastimes, like things that happen on this earth. You know? So this earth we have so many things, cows and you know, buildings and forests and all kinds of different animals. And then between here and Golok you could say there's Vaikuntha. And in Vaikuntha everything gets great and fantastic and wonderful. It's so like you go around with your, with your hair standing on end all the time, isn't it, you know? And then when you go into Golok it's like Hey, it looks more like the earth again, because it's more simple, isn't it? You know? Everything gets more simple again. Krishna's pastime gets sweeter and sweeter. So there's a very special connection between the earth and Golo. You know? And between human beings and the inhabitants of Vrindavan. You know? So we as human beings we're we're narrow. And Krishna's leelas are naravat, you know, which means they're like human pastimes. You know. So all the things that we do in our daily lives, like, you know, our children playing games, falling over, banging their head, isn't it? Spilling their food on the floor, 
putting the food down the front, you know, <coughs> peeing in the bed, or whatever they do, you know. <laughs> and um, we're kind of enjoying all these different pastimes. Actually, Krishna's doing exactly the same thing <coughs> in Galak with Nanda and um, Yashodama, right? All the same things that children do here. <coughs> and the children here do those things because that's what Krishna does. Right? So our life here is a reflection of that Galak life, you know? Like, if you want to know how girls behave, you watch girls and they, they behave in a certain way, they have a special way of behaving, isn't it, you know? So all the gopis and all the young girls have been done, they behaving just the same way, you know? And the boys also, the same. They like to wrestle, they like to play, they like to make noises and catch frogs, you know? And do all the same things that boys like to do in this world, you know? You think, why do they like to do that in Galat? Because why do, we, why do we like to do that here? Because they like to do that in Galak. Yeah. This is very important to understand that everything that we do is not something coming out of the blue. It doesn't just pop up out of nowhere. It's all there, beards and glasses and clothes and, you know, all the things that we do in our daily lives take place because they take place there in the spiritual world. Yeah. So, what is the difference between the two things? What's the difference? Anybody? <coughs> Nimai Nitai. What is the difference? Mm, I don't know, maybe the way we look at things. <coughs> yeah? I think the personal interest or the interest to, for the happiness of the other. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, anybody else like to say something? Yeah. I think here is the reflection, yeah. which is uh, heads down, foot up. Yes. So that means everything is going in an illusion. That means the reality is there and we are in a false. Story. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So everything, like the clothes you're wearing, in the spiritual world, they also wear similar kind of clothes, isn't that, you know? So all the different festivals that are performing, you know, holy and all these, they're all... Sorry? They're all... You can't hear me there, you mean? I cannot translate. Oh, you can't translate. Okay, so... Yeah. Anybody else? Anyone else like to offer any questions? Any comment? This is quite important to understand, actually, because on, on a... a uh, on a basis of understanding this clearly, you can you can make a clear um, distinction between a real spiritual rasa and prakriti sahajism. You know, so if you understand this point clearly, you can distinguish clearly what is correct and what is imitationism. You know, of course, imitationism is always a big uh, a big obstacle. Yeah, especially now I think more and more um, we have to be on our guard against imitating. But if you understand things clearly, and it's very clear in your mind what is a real thing, what is imitation, then you're not going to be taken in by imitation, isn't it? Yeah, it's like if you have, if you know what is a real note, you have a little machine, isn't it? You you can see the line in the middle or something. Yeah, they have a machine, isn't it? They Oh yes, that's real. No? All right. <laughs> that's counterfeit. Yeah. Go on. Yeah? Did you have something to say? No? Oh, I thought. For some reason, yeah? So maybe it's just the consciousness. So, so when the form is filled with consciousness, it's yeah, yeah, everybody's saying the right things. I'm not, it's all, everything, everyone's contributing something. Anybody else? Would like to say something? Yeah? Anyone would like to say something? Myself? Oh, I don't know, yeah, behind you? No? Did you want to say, add something? Well, it's 
the, the mood of selfishness or enjoying mood or <coughs> of service. Yeah, of course, yeah. In the spiritual world, everything is based on pure love, you yeah? know? So pure love is always trying to please the other. Sometimes we think maybe Krishna is just taking everything for himself. You know? He's a supreme enjoyer, so he just, he's enjoying everything. Everyone has to please him. <laughs> That's real egotism, isn't it? He's the biggest egotist. But you know, the funniest thing is, Krishna actually is always trying to please his devotees. So Krishna is also in that mood of trying to please his devotees. So they are trying to please him, and he is also trying to please them. And he is also busy trying to glorify them also. Yeah. It's very difficult, that's why it's difficult sometimes for us to understand these pastimes. Because like when Krishna went off to Mathura and left Sri Mati Radhika alone, it's a very difficult pastime, isn't it, to, to understand, you know? What is going on here? What is happening? You know? I mean, is Krishna heartless or what? Does he not feel anything? What do you think? <laughs> He's left Radha alone. And Ram and Sita were separated from each other, isn't that? You know? And it's heartbreaking, really, when you think about this. Drama. Huh? Drama. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And when Krishna said, I'm coming back, he promised, he said, I'm coming back to Vrindavan, but he never, he never went back. He never went back. Has anyone got any comment on this? Would you like to say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't understand this. I, I think like, like you speak now, this is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think? Anybody yeah? <laughs> would like to say something? Yeah? Because he had to. He had to, yeah? He was forced. <laughs> no, not, not really forced, but um, maybe he, he, he had to go to school and take the things like that, even without force. Mm. Yeah? Well, he was a prince, so it's the old story of the prince who has to go and, and um, resume his duties, isn't it? As a prince and the young ladies who he consorted with in the village, you know, when he was a coward boy, he has to leave them behind. And they know very well that he's going to leave them, yeah? Well, it might be speculation, but... I think he wanted to show or reveal the supremacy of the gopis' love to him because when they showed their, their feelings of separation then we can see that this, this kind of love Krishna is actually the greatest. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Did everyone hear that? Did, did, you, hear, did, did you hear what he had to say? Yeah, big number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's... he's what he said was correct. But what everyone else said was also correct. Yeah. This is a very deep subject, actually. And um, it's by this that we get actually drawn in. Isn't it? There was one Brahmin in the south of India, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling in the south. He was so much into the, Nar uh, the Ramayana. And um, he could not understand how it was that Ravana could possibly abduct Sita. He just could not understand it. How is this possible? Right? So he used to spend his days and nights agonizing over this. He was, his heart was broken. Yeah? He thought, this is not possible. That Ravana can touch my mother Sita. He was thinking like this. Right? And actually Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reassured him and said, actually, it's not possible. You're correct. You're right. It's not possible that Ravana could possibly touch uh, Mother Sita. So actually, the, what Ravana took, anybody know? Everybody knows, yeah? What actually happened there? Did Ravana actually abduct Sita or not? 
Do you know? Did what? No. No? So what was abducted then? Copy. Yeah. Huh? Copy. Who? A copy. A copy. A copy, that's right, yeah. Yes. A my copy. Yeah, Sita took Sita Devi took shelter of the fire god, isn't it? Agni. Yeah. And she was protected by Agni. And Ravana was only able to gra grab hold of a shadow. Yeah. This is quite interesting because the materialist can only grab a shadow. Even the materialist tries to take to Krishna consciousness. He can only take hold of a shadow of Krishna consciousness. Isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes some people are materially motivated, they come to the Krishna movement, they try to take to Krishna consciousness. But actually they can only get a shadow. Because right? unless you actually are on the spiritual platform, you cannot take hold of it. It's beyond the material. You know? So therefore you cannot grab hold of Mother Sita Devi, it's not possible. Yeah. Similarly when, <clears throat> I don't know whether many of you know this, when Lord Brahma tried to abduct the cowherd boys and the calves, you know? Actually he was not able to do that. He couldn't do it. You know? So we say, you know, from the Bhagavad Gita, we say, oh, he took away the cows and the cows and put them in a cave. But he couldn't, actually. So what did he take, actually? Sorry? A copy. A copy, <coughs> yeah. A shadow. Yeah, so the actual cows and cowherd boys, they remain there on the bank of the Jamuna, waiting for Krishna to come back. Krishna put them in a little protective bubble, you know? Even Balaram couldn't see them. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they stayed there and they thought it was just a moment. They thought just a moment had passed. The whole year went by and they thought it was just a moment and Krishna's coming back with the cows. Yeah, yeah. So there, are actually three, there were three sets of cows and cowherd boys during that year, wasn't there? There was the, the Mayak ones who were put away in the cave. There was the real ones who were covered on the bank of the Jumuna waiting for Krishna. And there was Krishna expanded as all the cows and the cowherd boys. Uh, three sets. Yeah. Did anybody know that? <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, it's nice these pastimes. Anyway, this Krishna consciousness is all about personal relationships. And although we have a lovely philosophy, even the guru, his business is to drag us into a personal relationship. You know, the expert spiritual master is not teaching us a doctrine, or a ritual, or a dogma. He's teaching us how to love him. Is that? So through his actions and through his gestures and through his words, he's attracting our hearts. So we become involved with him in a loving relationship. So, and then what happened? What does he do then? Anybody? Who him? The, the, the spiritual master, master, yeah. Spiritual master is Krishna, isn't it? Appearing in a form that we can relate with, you know? So, what's he do there? After he's involved us in our loving relationship and our hearts are entangled with him, what is his next ploy? <laughs> Anybody? Uh, yeah. Sorry? He left you allowed to go. Yeah, separation. Yeah. Yes, separation. Mm. Just then he goes. Yeah. Takes off. Yeah. Back to the spiritual world. He leaves you. Where have you gone? So actually, Krishna consciousness is an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> if, you're, if you're getting involved in this for the first time, I'm warning you right now, Krishna consciousness <laughs> is an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> and I don't want to talk all evening, I actually would like to start. If there are any questions, I'm going to ask your questions now. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah? Yeah? We just came to the mind. Uh, if you ask this questions, what is this, uh, what is this play in this, this uh, pastime of Krishna? So, yeah. actually, one has to read, remember the things. But this is 
I have difficulties with it, difficulties with this because it's only book knowledge. Mm. Maybe maybe there come a time uh, one has an experience, then one can talk about it. <coughs> to, to repeat these words uh, from the books, it is it's just I just think about this, yeah. Uh, to repeat the pastimes in this way, mm. have some have some problems with this. Mm. Right, yeah. Well, all these pastimes are there, so we can understand that Krishna has personal relationship with all these devotees, you know. So like Prahlad, you know, you read the pastimes of Prahlad, he's a young boy, right? innocent young boy, completely involved in a loving relationship with the Lord, right? So he's, he's going around, he's actually living in a hostile environment. We should understand the... You know, the circumstances, the ramifications of this, he's actually living in a hostile environment, you know, amongst demons, people who are not devotees. There's quite a few parallels there, I think, with most of us, you know, isn't it? He's a young, innocent boy, he's living amongst demons, and he's deeply involved in a relationship with the Lord, so actually he's thinking about Krishna all the time. Sometimes he forgets himself, and he's laughing sometimes, and sometimes he's crying. And sometimes it feels like the Lord is embracing him. And sometimes he's talking to the Lord like that, you know. So why are these descriptions given to us? They're given to us to show us that this is the way. Do you understand? You know? And we think, oh, that happened to Pallad thousands of years ago. Well, why not to you today? Isn't it? Do you think the Lord is any less available today than he was then? No. It's not like the age of miracles is over. You know, in the church they say that the age of miracles is over, isn't it? Jesus showed miracles in that time, but today there's no miracles. But we don't say that. The age of miracles is not over. And Krishna is as much available right now, right now for you, as he was for Pallad in the Shuma Bhagavatam. So it's just an impetus for you to also... But, you know, we have to kind of change our attitude sometimes towards Krishna. Krishna's asking you, look, change your attitude, you know. It's like, if you've been worshipping me as God on the altar all this time, that's very nice, I really appreciate it, thanks. But, I want to be your friend. You understand what I'm saying? And that change, then the attitude changes slightly. It says, oh, well how can I be your friend then? Isn't that? How can I develop that greater intimacy? And strangely enough, we might say, well, are we qualified for this? I say, in this Kali Yuga, there's no other option. <laughs> there is no other option. We cannot perform deity worship up to any decent standard. Isn't it? You can't even offer a piece of fruit that's worth offering. Or a flower that has any decent fragrance. Isn't it? You know? You get the flowers, they don't even smell of anything. It's, it's almost a disgrace to offer them. <laughs> is it not true? You know, it's like, what the hell is this? It doesn't even smell. And when I'm offering it to the Lord, you know, it's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? And you offer a piece of fruit, you think, what is that? You know? Yeah. You know, mangoes in the old days were huge things, isn't that? Full of fruit and really nectarous, you know? You get a mango in the supermarket, there's hardly any taste to it. When I was a kid, you know, we used to get, we used to go and pick cherries from the trees, you know, and pears, ripe fruit, you know, and they were delicious. And when you bit into it, the juice would all go down your chin, and that, it was like it was so juicy and fruity that, but these days you go and you, it looks like an apple and you, think, why is that? <laughs> why is it? <laughs> it's a piece of cardboard in the shape of an apple, you know. So I would suggest that we don't have any real choice but to enter into a deeper relationship with, with the Lord, you know. And I think in that prayer, Prabhupada's saying exactly that. He's saying, look, I'm on Mission Impossible here. You're sending me across the water to America, right? Isn't that? Mission Impossible. And look, you know, it's like, we're just going to waive all the formalities and all the official red tape and everything, all of that stuff, you know? I need you right here, right now, standing right next to me. 
right? I need your advice moment by moment. And if you don't give it to me, I, I'm going to tell Radha Rari about you. Isn't that? <laughs> so I think that since we follow in that footsteps of Ace Bhagavad we also inherit the right to, to demand, you know? Hey Krishna, this is a difficult job here. We need you. Right, I need you here, right next to me, right now. Any other questions? But I think this is a blackness of our believeness. Because we have to have strong faith, trust, and again to enhance my consciousness. Could you please highlight some of the guidelines how to do this thing? Because only then if I strengthen my strong belief in that, because I know that, but you have pointed out there is Prahlad and there is Hirna Kashyap in Kalyu. Mm. It's all happening in my mind. Yeah, so right, Everything yeah. is here. Yeah. And day-to-day -day situations are occurring yeah. in which I don't want Hirna Kashyap to win. No, right, I yeah. want that my Prahlad shall win all the time and he shall have a faith in Narayan. Yes, right, So yeah. how to enhance, how to keep on this in daily life? Well, you know, it's really difficult to give advice. But there's a thing called Sharanagati, which you're probably aware of, yeah? And uh, there are six persons of Sharanagati. And one of those is to, is to be, have firm faith that the Lord is your protector at all times. Right? And that he's looking after you and he'll provide everything for you that you need for your spiritual life. So I highly recommend the study of uh, Sharanagati. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written many nice songs in that respect. And you can follow those songs through. He opens his heart and his mind to the Lord. And you think, well, why do you know Taco is doing that? Isn't it? All we need to do, he's actually written down the feelings that we should feel. Isn't it? He's written down how we should feel. You know? And it starts off, doesn't it, my life. Amar Jibon. Shoda Pape Rota. Bhaktivinoda Thakur's songs are very beautiful. We should study them every day. Very much so. And try to feel in the same way. You know? So if we can sing that song, Gopinath, you know? And um, we, if you surrender to Krishna, Lord Ram says, anyone who says to me that they are mine, they belong to me, then I have to take care of that person. So if you say to Krishna that I'm yours, and they must take care of me. And if you don't, I'm going to tell right, right about you. Okay. Are there any other questions? Anything else that anyone wants to say? Yeah? I just remember when you were talking about Sharnagati and all. Mm. Uh, I don't recall the when you what is here. Have you heard the story about the footprints on the sand? Have you heard about it? Mm. Uh, it just take a minute. Ah, uh, yeah, go on. Yeah. There was Do the, you want that? Here we go. There was a devotee who, who died and um, um, left this earth and went up there and he was a great devotee so God was with him and they both were looking at his life in the material world and God was sitting and they were walking on the uh, um, sand near the seashore so there were two uh, sets of footprints God's and the devotees they were walking and he could see and God, uh, they were looking at his life he was a child what happened when he was a child then he grew up and then he was became Grahasta. And then, then suddenly the devotee sees there were only one pair of footsteps. Then he says, God, why did you leave me? I had so much problems just that time. And you left me. It's only my foot. And God says, 
please devotees, remember this what God said. And you are wanting to take it with your heart, in your heart, for the rest of your life. And the God says, I know, because you have so much problems, I was carrying you in my arms. They are my problems. So when you have problems, <coughs> think of Krishna, he's looking after you. Sometimes you have to go through certain problems, but he's always there. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to finish there, if that's all right. Is there any other questions or anything anyone else would like to say? Yeah, no? No more questions. No more questions, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, Rani, Rani. All the way to Shilakar.